Hello and welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop. I'm your host Frank Foster and today we're going to take a look at the 30th Infantry Division, the Old Hickory Division, service in World War II in the European theater. We'll take a look at the meaning of a shoulder sleeve insignia, which, well, but wait a minute Frank, why do you have a World War I uniform behind you with the 30th Infantry Division insignia turned sideways? Because they wore it horizontally in World War I. Then they changed it to vertically in World War II. So I'll show you some examples of that. And we'll also take a look at all of the campaigns, all of the unit honors, and all of the medals that every officer, non-commissioned officer, or enlisted man earned in the division for their service in World War II in the European theater. And we'll take a special look at the medals that the combat infantry and combat medics earned in addition to the regular service medals. And then I think we'll find, well, I think you'll find it very interesting. We'll take a look at a half a dozen actual display cases of the 30th Infantry Division World War II veterans and how they displayed their medals and insignia. I think you'll uh, find this very enjoyable. So, come on, let's go. The 30th Infantry Division, the Old Hickory Division, was activated in September 1940 and entered combat in June 1944, landing in Normandy. It had 282 days of combat, and with only 15,000 men normally assigned, it endured 18,000-plus casualties during that 282 days of combat. The Old Hickory, or 30th Infantry Division, shoulder patch has a, well, it has quite a story to it. It was designed for the 30th Division troops of World War I in honor of President Andrew Jackson, a Tennessee statesman who led troops from Tennessee and South Carolina and North Carolina in the War of 1812. The letters OH are, of course, of the initials of Old Hickory, Andrew Jackson, and the letters XXX are the Roman numerals for 30, the number of the organization. The two patches on the far right have a very interesting story. During the Battle of the Bulge, the 30th Infantry Division took care of its share of a counterattack so effectively that the Germans were convinced that it was no run-of-the-mill division. The Germans began calling the 30th Division FDR's SS troops, or Roosevelt's SS troops, because they just couldn't believe a regular U.S. Army Infantry Division could handle them so roughly. And of course, some enterprising members of the division started making up the specialty patches that you see on the right with FDR and the SS over the 30th Division insignia. A copy of the division's World War II distinctive unit insignia is shown above the patches. It was an enamel version of the shoulder sleeve insignia. The 30th Infantry Division landed at Omaha Beach, Normandy on 10 June 1944 and then led the spearhead attack on the St. Lowe breakthrough. It relieved the 1st Infantry Division near Mortrain and then was in place to defeat a massive German counterattack. The division then drove east through Belgium, and in 10 September, elements entered Holland, and the next day they were taking up positions along the Worm River when the 30th Infantry Division launched its attack on the Siegfried Line in October 1944. It succeeded in contacting the 1st Infantry Division encircling Aachen. The 30th Infantry was moved up to defensive positions during the Battle of the Bulge and held critical positions in the Ardennes against the German forces, stopping them. It then crossed the Rhine River and advanced into Germany and participated in the final push towards Berlin. The division then made contact with the Russians at Grundenwall on the Elbe River and after a short occupation period, the 30th Division began moving home, arriving in the United States on 19 August 1945. Individual soldiers of the 30th Infantry Division had a remarkable record of individual valor, earning six Medal of Honors, 50 Distinguished Service Crosses, over 1,700 Silver Stars, and over 6,000 Bronze Stars. The Division participated in five campaigns, Normandy, Northern France, Rhineland, the Ardennes, and Central Europe, and I'll list these below. 
Each campaign earned a bronze star on the soldiers' European, African, Middle Eastern campaign medal, and those soldiers who fought through all five of the campaigns earned a silver star in lieu of five bronze stars. The units of the 30th Division earned eight Distinguished Unit Citations, which later became known as Presidential Unit Citations, and that included the Presidential Unit Citation for the Assault on St. Lo, the one for the Battle of Mortrain, and the Presidential Unit Citation for its work during the Battle of the Bulge. France, of course, presented a croix de guerre across the war to the division. To avoid confusion over the Distinguished Unit Citation, that was originally an award shown above, which was a gold wreath on a cloth background that went on the sleeve of the uniform, but it later became the Presidential Unit Citation, which is a blue ribbon with a gold frame. And the Presidential Unit Citation is a unit equivalent of the individual award of a Distinguished Service Cross. A big deal. Taking a look at the individual medals, every officer, non-commissioned officer, and enlisted man of the 30th Infantry Division would have earned. The first one on your left is the American Campaign Medal that was awarded for the period of their service while training in the United States. Then the European, African, Middle Eastern Campaign Medal for their service in Europe. And then the World War II Victory Medal. A simple display of these awards would look like this with the Infantry Division patch flanked by the branch insignia, the three medals with the appropriate campaign stars on the European Theater of Operations medal, the weapons qualification badges in the lower bottom corners, and the presidential unit citation. <laughs> Whoops, time out just a second. If you are enjoying this show on the 30th Infantry Division, the old Hickory Division, then please give us a like and even better subscribe. It'll keep us on the air. Thank you. Let's get back to the show. During World War II, the U.S. Army changed its period of qualification for the award of a Good Conduct Medal to enlisted personnel from three years to two years. So most soldiers earned the Good Conduct Medal. <laughs> but not all of them. The majority of the enlisted soldiers that served in the 30th Infantry Division during World War II would be authorized four medals as shown here, the Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign, the ETO Medal, and the Victory Medal, as well as having qualified with their assigned weapon shown by their marksmanship badges. And there were quite a few weapons which the individual soldier could qualify for, and uh, as you can see by these various attachments. And if you want to know more about Army Marksmanship Medals, well, we've got a great video out there for you to... Germany's unconditional surrender was 9 May 1945, and the division did not return home until August 1945, so every soldier in the division at the end of the war would also be authorized the Army of Occupation Medal, as shown on the far right. But wait, that's not all. Two years later, in 1947, General Marshall, Chief of Staff of the Army, decided that the combat infantrymen and the combat medics had not been sufficiently honored for their bravery and skills and authorized the award of the Bronze Star Medal for meritorious service to everyone who had qualified as a combat infantryman and a combat medic. Let me point out here that there are two types of bronze stars. On your left was a bronze star awarded for valor, and it has a V device affixed to the ribbon, and then the bronze star for meritorious service, which does not have a V device on it. So at the end of a war, a combat infantryman would have a display case like the one shown on your left with the bronze star, the Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign, the ETO Medal with appropriate campaign stars, the Victory Medal, and the Occupation Medal, as well as the Presidential Unit Citation and Shooting Badges. While on your right, the combat medics also includes, in this case, a purple heart between the bronze star and the Good Conduct Medal. With 18,000 casualties, you can be assured that many of their awards displays included the Purple Heart Medal. I should mention that the French were very generous in their award of aquatic air or cross of war to many of the combat infantrymen and combat medics of the 30th Division. And that medal, as shown on the far right, would have come after the Medal of the Occupation of Germany. A nice example of this is a staff sergeant combat infantryman of a 30th Division who displays his awards. As 
To include a French Croix de Guerre that comes after the Army of Occupation medal and before a commemorative medal which he has used. This infantry platoon sergeant displays the 30th Infantry Division crest as well as the distinctive unit insignia next to his rank insignia, his decorations to include the Bronze Star, Purple Heart, and Good Conduct Medal. He shows two campaign stars on his European Theater of Operations Medal and one commemorative medal on the far right to indicate his service in the Battle of the Bulge. This artillery captain uses his rank and branch insignia at the top as well as his decorations with ribbons. He has a bronze star, his regular medals, and then the French Croix de Guerre on the far right. In the bottom right hand corner are two gold bars that indicate two six month periods in combat or one year in total combat. This lieutenant colonel has a very interesting display because it has not only his rank and branch insignia, shoulder sleeve insignia, and distinctive unit insignia, his combat infantry badge, his ribbons, and his medals, but his medals tell you that he served in the reserves for 10 years after the war. He also displays his forgeres and orange lanyard. And this elaborate display of a technician fifth grade shows not only his Ike jacket with ribbons and patches and reenlistment marks as well as overseas service bars, straights the unusual fact that he served in both the European and Pacific theaters and he's augmented his display with a number of commemorative medals. Putting together a Veterans Awards display is a great way to remember and honor their service during World War II. 1945, your veteran came home with maybe three or four ribbons on his chest, as shown to the left of this combat medic, when in reality the medals were not even struck or really all authorized until 46, 47 or later, and he would be authorized the six medals shown on the right. Two World War II medals I did not mention are shown on your left, the American Defense Medal and the Women's Army Corps Medal. Now, there are videos out on both of those medals if you want to know more. But many members of the division, since it was activated in 1940, would have been authorized the American Defense Medal. <laughs> if you want to know more about United States Army medals, badges, and insignia from the revolution to today, We've been publishing these books for over 30 years, and this is our latest edition. It's available for you on Amazon, but it could be in your house in two or three days. Hey, thanks for watching today. I hope you enjoyed the show on the 30th Infantry Division, the old Hickory Division during World War II, as much as we enjoyed putting it together. And if you did, please give us a like, even better subscribe, and give us your comments down below. And as always, I hope I've listed everything that you might find as a reference down below. Okay, see you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop. Very special thanks to Medals of America for providing all of the medals and supporting this program.